Yo, what's up? Circuit Score here, and today we are going to be updating to the latest stable version of the NVIDIA app, 11.0.5, as well as doing some gameplay testing with the new Smooth Motion that just came out for the 4000 series cards. I'm going to be testing some additional games that don't have frame generation by default, as well as some that are actually considered unsupported on the NVIDIA compatibility page to see if we can get those to work. So here we are in the NVIDIA app, it already popped up with the update and I'm gonna have to uncheck the beta release because I want to make sure that I'm just on the stable release and we can go through some of the new updates here. It's pretty similar to the beta. So DLSS override global settings as well as in-game statistics. So now you can override any game to use the latest DLSS model as long as it's compatible and on their compatibility page as well. This will be available with the latest game ready driver, which we'll also have to upgrade to today. And then they've also updated the in-game statistics, which also worked in the beta as well. You can hit Alt Z and then go to statistics and use the NVIDIA overlay to check to see whether some of these features are actually active or not, such as smooth motion or DLSS 4 or which model it's using. So that's pretty cool. Like I said, we're going to be testing smooth motion on some unsupported games, as well as some games that just plain don't have frame generation by default in their settings. Let's go ahead and update this app as well as our driver and get into doing some smooth motion testing here. And one thing to note, if you opted in for the beta and experimental features and you just want to be on the stable build, you'll have to uncheck this box in the settings and then under the about. So that's what I'm going to do here. And then I'm going to relaunch the app and hope it parses a new update so I can be on stable. All right, so I actually did have to go to NVIDIA's website and go and find this download and install it manually because I was already on the beta release. So this way it forced it to be on stable now because I couldn't get the driver in the NVIDIA app to notice that there was an update from the one that I was on previously. And now we're on 581.15. This is released August 28th, 2025. So that should be the latest driver as of now. And just to confirm, we can go to a game that supports smooth motion. I tested out Red Dead Redemption 2 in my last video when we did the beta update. But let's just scroll down here just to make sure. And yep, you can see smooth motion. So that way we have confirmed that we are on the latest driver and the latest stable release. And same thing up here, you can see we now have our global settings, which there was a global settings tab before, but you couldn't do DLSS overrides. So now you can do full override for all of your games. You can set the latest frame generation, which is something I tested in my last video. The latest frame generation model does help with performance, even without smooth motion. The latest ray reconstruction, and then you can change your super resolution preset. Now, someone in my last video stated that I should always just go with latest, and that probably is a good idea. But as I'm making this video, and I did some testing with their overlay, latest and preset K are the same model. But anyway, still probably a good idea to keep it on latest because if there's ever a, another update to the super resolution model, you can make sure that you're always on the latest version. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply so we can make sure we have all the most up-to-date DLSS override settings for all of our games. All right, so moving on to doing some specific performance testing on a few games that some of them are essentially unsupported and we have to add the exe file manually and some of them i found were not supported at all so we're going to start with fallout 4 here this one actually I have two different versions on my system because i have a backup and i use an older version of fallout for modding i haven't modded this game in a while but it does if you scroll down here support smooth motion frame generation and right now we're going to keep it off because we're going to be doing some testing prior and then we're going to be doing some testing with smooth motion on because we want to see what kind of frame rate we're getting with it off and then what kind of performance gains we're getting with it on. And then some of these other ones here, like, for example, DLSS override mode, it says unsupported. Uh, this is the frame generation for multi frame gen. I can't use that one anyway. That's for a 5000 series card. And then super resolution mode also unsupported, unfortunately. But luckily, smooth motion is supported. Let's go ahead and run this. All right, so here we are in game. 
and I'm gonna put up my performance overlay. Sometimes this performance overlay does not work well with smooth motion. There are some games where you have to actually turn it off and we're gonna have to actually use Nvidia's overlay, which I'm gonna add up top as well by hitting Alt R. Now I've already preset this up in the Nvidia settings to show us all the information that we need. And right now it's showing that smooth motion is inactive, but we're still getting pretty good FPS. And this is on the older version. This is not on the next generation version of Fallout. This is on 1.10.163, which is the best version if you're trying to mod it. But I do think I have a little bit of mods installed in this build, but nothing that is like visuals or performance related. Wow, all right. So anyway, let's go ahead and remember that about 180 ish, sometimes going even higher. This game runs really well on my system. And for those of you guys who are not familiar with my videos, I run these with a 4080 Super and a 9800 X3D with 32 gigs of RAM at 4K. So I am trying to push it as much as possible here. And that's the only way I can do it is if I run these at 4K to push my system the most. All right, so let's go ahead and turn smooth motion on, which also turns the low latency mode on to ultra by default. All right, so here we are back in game and I've got my performance overlay up. And now with smooth motion on, we are getting 260 to 270 FPS. And it's dipping down a little bit depending on the area we're in, but that is pretty solid. So not an actual 2X because obviously 180 would be closer to 350 or so, or 360. But still pretty decent performance boost. So we got like pretty much like a 50% performance increase. And this is on the older version of this game. And I don't think they really changed a whole lot of the visuals that much with the newest version, but it might run a little worse with the latest version of Fallout. And to my knowledge, the latest version does not have frame generation. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But yeah, this is a great way to actually implement frame generation and get a little more out of your system. So let's go ahead and turn on NVIDIA's overlay just to make sure it is active. And you can see on the far right side of that overlay it says sm active and that is smooth motion so we can confirm that that is working and if you guys are unfamiliar how to get to those settings to set up your statistics you can go to alt z and then down here it says statistics and we can go ahead and set up everything we need to so if you hit view all it'll give you every single category and you can just click on the ones you want some of these don't seem to work as well, like sometimes the latency one doesn't seem to work, but most of them work pretty well. And this is actually really nice. You can now activate all these other overlay options to show if you're using the latest version of frame generation or the latest version of super resolution override, ray reconstruction mode, and also smooth motion. Now for this game specifically, all of these don't work except for smooth motion but it still runs very well and looks really good. So even though we weren't getting 2x frame generation, this is still pretty solid. And it's probably not going to look as smooth on your end because YouTube can only render at 60 FPS. But on my end, I am getting a buttery smooth, like 240 to 260. Like it is incredibly smooth on my end. Let's go ahead and test another game here. And the next game that I wanted to test was Grand Theft Auto 4. Now, 5, they just released the newest next-gen update, and that one actually has frame generation built into the game. So I was going to test that one, but I didn't realize the latest next-generation update had frame generation. So I figured, all right, let's try to do Grand Theft Auto 4, because that's still a pretty good game. And I clicked in here, and of course, right here, I actually have not seen this yet. It says smooth motion unsupported, unfortunately. So this one we won't be able to test unless we probably force it in an app like NVIDIA Profile Inspector. That's a possibility. I'd have to do a little more research on that to see if that's possible, though. So the next game I want to test out, and this is actually pretty cool, I want to test out an RTS game. And this is Age of Empires 4. And I figured that an RTS game, it's kind of crazy to me that they never have frame generation 
settings, even in like the latest RTS games, because those games take so much resources sometimes when you have those massive battles and there's like hundreds of units on the screen and it's just tanking your performance. I feel like this is a perfect candidate for frame generation. And luckily here, though, now with smooth motion, we can actually turn that on. However, first, like I said, let's go test out the performance with it off and then we'll turn it on and see what we're getting. All right. So right now we're getting about 180 FPS. And let's just do a little quick like exploration just to see. Yeah, kind of about the same 170 to like 180 region. What'd she say? <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, yeah, so about 180. Let's go ahead and exit out of the game. All right. Now let's go ahead and turn smooth motion on. With low latency mode on ultra. And this one here is the same. It does not support DLSS override or any of those settings. So it's just going to be smooth motion for this one. All right, so here we are back in game. And once again, it's not a true 2x frame generation. We're getting about 240 FPS. I guess depending on where we look, it goes higher if there's nothing going on in that area. Same kind of thing here. We're just going to kind of run around real quick, do some quick performance testing. So yeah, it's like pretty much like the same as Fallout, like about a 50% increase here, which is still pretty solid. I mean, you can't complain about 250 FPS in an RTS game at 4K. <laughs> like that's pretty good. But still, definitely not a two a true 2x. And let's just do a real quick test here. I have noticed sometimes if I turn off MSI Afterburner, depending on the game, the performance actually will increase a little bit. Some games have problems with smooth motion and MSI Afterburner with Reva Statistics Tuner. But no, I just turned it off and it looks like it's about the same, about 240. So pretty solid increase. And again, I think this is a great use for an RTS game where there's like a ton of things going on on the screen and your FPS is tanking and you need all that you can possibly get. I mean, I feel like frame generation for these type of games is a no brainer. And I'm still not sure why they don't implement it, but there you go. 240 FPS 4K with this system is pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and test out another game here. All right, and finally we have Persona 5 I was gonna test out. Now this one was interesting. It actually wouldn't find a profile. So I had to go find the program myself by hitting this add program button. And then I went and found it in my Steam library here and it's just P5R. And then that created a profile here. Now you can't launch it from here because it doesn't have like a built-in profile for optimization. But luckily if we scroll down, there is an option for smooth motion. Let's go ahead and just launch persona without smooth motion first all right so here we are in game this is at the very beginning of the game and i have everything set to max so if i go to tab that's how you get to the settings here you can see i've got everything set to max and unfortunately this game does not have a way to uncap the frame rate at least at least not that i know maybe there's a mod to do so but that might actually work to our advantage so technically there's a frame limit and we are hitting that frame limit because this game is not terribly hard to run so right now this is just without smooth motion active 120 fps we can do a quick little run around here this is the very beginning of the game so i can't really go too far so yeah about 120 locked let's go ahead and exit out and try to test smooth motion and actually really quick let's see what our overlay is doing here okay so with smooth motion off our overlay does work for msi afterburner all right, and back in our NVIDIA app, go ahead and turn on smooth motion with the low latency mode and relaunch. All right, so here we are back in game, and this one was acting kind of funky. And this was one of the games that I was telling you guys about where sometimes you have to disable your MSI Afterburner overlay and only use the NVIDIA one. So in this case, I have a shortcut to disable it, luckily. And as soon as I did that, my frame rate went from 70 all the way up to an actual true doubled 240. 
So we essentially went from 120 to now a locked 240 FPS with smooth motion on. And this is awesome for my system because I have a 240 Hertz monitor. So 240 locked at 4K. This is the absolute smoothest experience that I could possibly have with my system. So pretty cool, just, but just keep in mind, sometimes that overlay does not work correctly and you're just gonna have to use the one that's built in, which is Nvidia's built-in overlay. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. If you guys have any other games you'd like me to test out with smooth motion, let me know down below in the comments. I've been doing some other kind of content, kind of showing some PC optimization tweaks. I also do a lot of mod list testing for Skyrim. I really like to test out some of those really cool, like graphic intense mod lists. So if any of that interests you, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, have a wonderful day.